This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. Corey Winfield. Corey Winfield. Corey Winfield. You have a rich person's name. Like, you should be a billionaire with the name Winfield. Anyway, call me back, bro. 22nd of December, 2020. Welcome to the 217 Recovery Podcast. My name is Corey Winfield. Joining me, my lovely wife, Marnie Winfield. What's up, Marnie? How are you? I'm well. Good. I'm well as well. Now we have the studio set up. Usually, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it is a freaking mess right now, but I do have the fireplace going. Mm-hmm. Virtual fireplace. It's on the TV. It's Netflix, but that's fine. Mm-hmm. It creates nice atmosphere. Ambiance. I'm doing something in recovery that a lot of people in treatment do. Paint. Mm-hmm. You know, activities are like, let's try some new stuff. Let's try some painting. Some people work, some people doesn't. I am a painter. It's my real profession. It's my calling in life. I just happen to be doing a podcast about recovery and doing other recovery-related things with my life. But painting is... This is where I'm going to make my billions. <laughs> I dabble a little in digital art, mm-hmm. which I made you something. Yes, a beautiful piece. It's called, I named that piece, by the way. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. It's called Abstract AF. Okay. Because it. Yeah. You didn't sign it still. Mm-hmm, I didn't. That's what makes it priceless. It's the original. Because in a billion years, people are going to find that and they're like, Genius! What genius did this? Kind of like when we find like carvings in the pyramids or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what people are gonna think. Like, maybe we'll put a oh, picture of it. Mind. We'll put a picture of it on the website. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I think they could look back though in a billion years and go, "Wow, that's what they were drawing." What is it? okay? The spaceship. <laughs> How we <laughs> look at their stuff from. The Egyptians are like, oh, is that like a spaceship and this is wearing a cow on his head, you know? It's art. Was that art, though? Well, this is art. This is art. But, I mean, in a billion years, million years, whatever, are they going to just think, oh, wow, that we thought that civilization was advanced, but no. Nah. That's why you got to sign that. They're just going to see scribble. They're not going to even understand what that means. Wow. They won't even so have signatures in the future. Picasso was scribble, too. Mark my words on that. Okay. Yeah, but it's not it hasn't been a billion years since Picasso. Picasso. The same. I just call him Costco. <laughs> I call him Picasso. <laughs> yeah, that guy. See, I'm beefing with him. Uh huh. Because my painting, so my digital art, my digital art is a billion times better than his digital art ever was. Hmm. Write that down too. Okay. I can prove it. It is good. It is good to find hobbies and things that make you happy, though. Yeah, yeah back to that. Uh, <laughs> thanks for reeling it in there. Yeah, I was about ready to go after his family, but yeah. So the studio, we should Facebook Live it real quick, but I don't know, just to show. Like, I got sketch or print paper. I have transfer sketching pads all over. Nico was chilling on them. Got paint everywhere. It's just a, it's a wreck. It's Christmas. It is. It's very Christmassy. But yeah, the Amazon boxes and packages <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> like you don't even know. And our a friend Eric came over earlier, and he wanted to buy some stuff, not drugs. Of course not. No, buy some uh, clothing, some we gear. Should, yeah, we should start. Uh, but I, that means I have to make more. But, like, a rewards card. Okay. I'm listening. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Eric's like, hell yeah, you should. He's listening right now going, yeah, 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 start one. No, he came through, got a, uh, a couple sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. There was one sweatshirt, a guy was like, hey, can you make me one that's 5XL, XLT? Mm-hmm. Which, I uh, We can. Yeah, we did. Yeah. You know? But I then he didn't want it, or I don't know what happened. So I was like, hey, Eric, what about this one? He's like, hell yeah. Nice. I was like, cha-ching. <laughs> I 
We can make onesies. We can make mm-hmm. we can make it all. Yeah, and that one, I, I mean, I don't know. Don't give them ideas. But, yeah, we can. And the thing is with the clothes, like, we just like to wear it. But it's cool. Like, people like Eric, he wants to wear it. You know, he wants to be a part of it. And he really likes 217 Recovery and what we do and what we stand for. So, you know, he wants to be on board. And that is rewarding for us. We're not making profit on it. You know, we are probably thousands of dollars in debt from the clothes that we've made and, oh, and gosh, given away. Yeah. And, you know, it. It, it's something that if you know if we can cover the cost on it back, then fine. You know, it's it's kind of like this art is for me. Mm-hmm. You know, creating the logo, printing it out, you know, weeding it out, putting it on a shirt. It's like almost not really therapy, but it it does. It soothes me. Mm-hmm. The other night I was having a moment, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna print some stuff and weed some stuff and make shirts. Yeah, because it kind of gets you. Like for me, wearing wearing the logo, and I've talked about this before on the podcast, is that uh, it's it's more a symbol of like what it's it's representing what two seventeen believes in, you know what, you know we believe in, mm-hmm. and you know that's having fun in recovery and supporting people in early recovery and people in active addiction, um, and believing in them, you know, and. It's kind of a statement wearing the clothes, I feel like. Yeah, 217 Recovery is more than a nonprofit organization. I'd say it's a lifestyle. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's it's about doing it. Mm-hmm. It's about living it. it. The goods and the bads. You know, the ups and the downs. And moving forward to say that we can do it. And we can go back right into the angel number or the meanings that that had Mm. of 217 and we've talked about that a million times too but it's pretty it's pretty moving (laughs) you know and pretty incredible so today i did some things but you did some things too well you did some things yesterday i'm really proud of you for it thank you you had a little accident and you took care of the things you needed to take care of. I'm proud of you for that. I can tell you didn't want to, but it was just like one of those steps of living the lifestyle. You know, like you're an adult now and the old you would have been like, ah, whatever. And you know what? If you get hurt, whether you're at JC Penny, I think my mom fell at JC Penny one time in the parking lot and she didn't report it. She mm-hmm. might have been working there and she ended up having some problems. But since she didn't report it, it was just like, oh, that never happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and somebody says that all the time. They're like, it didn't happen if you didn't write it down. I don't remember who that is. A lot of people say that. Yeah. So it's it's just kind of one of those things where, yep, you want to document that. And I fell down some stairs. I I wasn't working. And I wasn't even drinking. I was sober. But it was at a vacation home. And I should have. But I didn't. I should have called an ambulance and had him take me to the hospital because I ended up messing my back up really bad because how I landed and I broke my toe. It was bad, but I was in shock and I just was like, I don't know what to do, but I wish I would have done things a little differently, especially if you are on the job if you're at work like my mom was and she didn't. And maybe I have that wrong. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure she was. But if you don't document it, if you don't do the things that you want to do and most of us are like, "Ah, I'm fine. That's fine. That's cool. But sometimes those injuries, if you like herniate, if you have a herniated disc, you know, you don't know, mm-hmm. but you go to reach for something one day and you're just like, Ugh, uh, and you're just in crippling pain. You can't even move. And then you find out, oh yeah, well, it's probably because of that fall. Oh, you didn't document anything. Well, we're going to go ahead and bill you for this visit today. And you're like, wait, wait, what? Yeah, and just to fill you in, I had a little slip and fall on some ice on stairs and uh, while I was working. And uh, it was very Matrix-y, kind of, <laughs> like, slow-mo, like, Wah! and I knew I was going down. And I was just whole time praying, like, oh, gosh, please have this be as, <laughs> like, the least painful as possible. And... Some lady saw it and freaked out, and that made me even more scared. But um, no, I ended up kind of like getting up. I'm like, I think I'm fine, and went throughout the day. And 
Then my hubby's like, yeah, you probably should go and at least get <laughs> and get yourself at least looked at. So it turns out I have a sprained sacroiliac joint, which is like where your back meets your pelvis. It's like your lower back and it's sore and it's just a time thing. So, but I'm glad I got it looked at. They x-rayed it and everything. And that way down the line, if for whatever reason there is some aftermath, you know, pain associated with it, I did, I did that step and... I really did not want to go <laughs> at all, but I did, yeah. And I bet you're glad. Hey, you know, at least I know. And yeah. nine times out of ten, hey, that's what you're going to get. But just to cover your own self, and a lot of people are just like, oh, no, I'm not a sissy. I'm not going in there. But it's nothing to do with about being a sissy. You know, it just it's about, okay, let's, let's see what happened. And I'm telling you, when it happens and you don't, Go get that checked out. <laughs> you're kicking yourself and you're thinking. Because you can't ah, go back. Shut up. Yeah. But so yeah. I'm proud of you for. Thank you. At least doing that and having to put up with me go, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know you should go do that. Yeah. But I'm proud of you for that, though. Thank you. You're growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wrote. The letter to my father. Yes, you did. I'm very proud of you for that. I'm not going to read it on the podcast. Maybe one day. I don't know. It's completely up to you. I mean, I I thought it was very well written. And you said exactly what you were going to say. And yeah. I think it will be well received. Yeah, and it, you know, if it's not, okay. You know, I did my part. You know, I can now kind of wash my hands of it, and whatever happens, that's well, going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's it's not uh, it's no fault of mine if nothing does come of it. You know, I know he used to be the kind of guy who would hold a grudge, and maybe that text message I sent him two years ago just sent him over the top. I don't know, but. It's on him now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't apologize for sending the text. I don't know if you noticed that. Right. <laughs> I didn't, didn't apologize if it hurt his feelings or something. But, you know, I, actually, I think I said it needed to be sent or needed to happen. Mm-hmm. And it did. You know, I needed to get that off my chest. And did it hurt his feelings? Mm, that, those are his feelings. Uh, if it did, hey, sorry. But it had to happen. It had to happen for me to go into treatment and realize that, yeah, there's a huge part of me that that's still not still hurt, but that was hurt and had some real issues with our relationship that we had or lack of one, um, as a kid. So, you know, those are things that I needed to deal with as an adult and I would drink that away. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of those that were like super buried down in there that I've been burying my whole life, you know, the approval that I've been looking for from them and just wanted to be recognized, you know, um, I'm trying to think of an analogy where I could use where it's like, if you don't see somebody for a while or it's like, okay, <laughs> you like this one, the Dairy Queen in the city I grew up in, mm-hmm. it closes in the winter. Mm-hmm. But in the spring, boy, woo, everybody's excited. Yeah. DQ's open. And then it just kind of goes back to normal. So, like, when I would see my father after so many, it, yeah, you know, and I'm, yeah, so, yeah. And then, oh, he's gone. Just the same old, same old regular day. So, I don't know. Maybe that's a horrible analogy, but do you understand what I'm no, saying? No, yeah. Like, Something comes around and you just want to jump around like, yeah, 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 yeah. But then it goes away. And, you know, that took its toll on me too. Um, wanting to be the center of attention and, hey, hey, look, look at here. And when I go over to my nephew's house, you know, he'll want to show me every paper airplane he's made since 1982. And it's like, buddy, like, that's awesome. Like, that's cool. Oh, wait, hold on. Look at this one, Uncle Corey, because he wants to hang out with Uncle Corey because, well, who doesn't? <laughs> and... And that's just his way of, you know, wanting approval or, you know, just my acknowledgement that, hey, man, that's a good job. That means a lot to him. Yeah. 
And with that said, I need to do a better job personally of acknowledging that instead of just, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's throw him in the fire now. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like that. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> not that that's ever happened, but I'm just saying if it did. Do you feel like that once, like when you actually like handed that package over and mailed it out, it was just like breathe, like mm. kind of like a relief? Well, I spent all morning avoiding it. Yeah, I know. Even though I knew I was going to do it today. Instead, I fixed our YouTube channel, which, by the way, we need you to subscribe. Yes, for and those of you who didn't get my text. Yes, or my – I sent it out to a couple people. But if you would subscribe to YouTube, our YouTube channel, there's there's so many of them. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so bad at it. But the one that we have now, I don't remember how many subscribers it has, but – it should have this episode on it because the other one breaks it up into like 15 minute segments. I was tired of that. So anyway, I figured it out, put a new picture up there. It's like new episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And this is a picture of me. So subscribe, we get a hundred subscribers. Then it can be, yeah, go to youtube.com slash two seventeen recovery mm-hmm. podcast or whatever we want to call it. So we can have a custom URL. So if we get a hundred, people subscribe then we should be able to do that so please do that thanks yeah we'd appreciate that share with your friends tell them to like us and thank you to all the all the people that did that today for us yeah that was cool thanks shout out to y'all word but anyway so yeah i was avoiding that letter and i thought well i'll just change the youtube stuff around a little bit and i had my list i actually numbered it today and letter to dad was number one Mm mm-hmm and I finished that at number four. <laughs> and I uh, looked at you like, when you came home and I was like, I don't know why I numbered these. Like, that was just a game I guess I was playing with myself. No, it's good to do that. Mm, I don't know if I should have numbered them because then it just made me realize how bad I was avoiding everything. But once I got it written, though, it was a, it was a relief. You know, I, I sat back in the, the chair here and just thought. <sighs> See, breathe. Okay, that's done. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't that, and it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I had to think about things that I didn't want to think about. You know, the things that I said that probably weren't received very well, but it had to happen. And I really kind of got choked up because my grandma, like the, she used to always tell me when I was in radio that I would end up leaving radio and that I wasn't going to be in radio forever, and that God was just having me work in radio so that I could. Um, get the skills that I'll need to put to use for God one day. Mm-hmm. You know, she was so animated. About it. And she wouldn't just say, like, you know, I think that one day. No, she'd be like, matter of fact, like, you know, this radio thing, that's cool, but you're, you're not going to work in radio forever. And these skills that you have, you're going to put those to work for God. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, okay, Grandma. <laughs> okay. And, you know, God's purpose is what she would say. So I feel like I'm starting to figure out what my purpose in life is. Mm-hmm. I know the things that I like and I know what's making me happy. And that was something that when I was in active addiction, I didn't even have time to look to see what purpose was or who cared. You know, I just needed to get to the liquor store and how was I going to have liquor for the next day? Mm-hmm. But now obviously way different lifestyle. Oh Yeah. Way different attitude and life is good. Mm-hmm. How are you going to deal? I, I got a text from one of my art students <laughs> and he said uh, December was a tough month for him. Uh, it's a month his grandmother passed away and it was the month of her birthday. And I said, well, celebrate her. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure there's some great memories in there. I know my ma- my grandmother would... <laughs> she would want me to celebrate her and go to church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She'd be like, get you, get to church. But um, unfortunately, you never got to meet that grandmother of mine. But you will be going and spending time with the in-laws. Bitch. Yep. Are you scared? No, not at all. Because now you're in the family. Like, it, 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 pff, gloves are off. <laughs> no, I've I've always felt accepted by them. They're fantastic. Have you talked to Kendra, Travis's wife, my brother's wife? Yeah. 
Just say, now, how did it change once you were actually oh, in no. the family? Oh, you should have asked her. I didn't ask her about that. I can. I ain't scared. <laughs> I'm not. Well, it's going to be like, hey, I'm, can you go ahead and do this, do that, do this, do that? And, yeah. No, I like, think you're like just I, trying to, I, I I think you're trying to that freak too. me out. As, on, our, on our wedding day, I'm standing in there, you know, and nice shoes and my pants, my wedding pants. And it had snowed a lot. <laughs> and my shoes, I don't even think, had traction on them. Like, they were just, like, plastic shoes or whatever you'd wear for a wedding. And your mom was like, hey, can you go out and, Corey, can you go out and get the rest of that food from the other building? And I'm like, I just looked at her like. I know, but see, I think, that's, I think that's, like, one of those things where. Yeah, I think I think it's a compliment because you are, I mean, not that specific example. <laughs> That's a bad example. But like just and saying treating people like family, you know, like help each other out where each other needs it mm-hmm. and comfortable enough to be like, hey, could you help me out? You know what I mean? It's not like you're just, you're a guest. You don't ask the guest to do stuff that's like, you know, family stuff. Mm. Yeah, I guess. But you know, I, it's like I, they're comfortable. Like you go into the through the house to go to get whatever, and you know your way around now because you know you're not a stranger. <laughs> it's a compliment. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'd rather do the guest. I thing. know that people who are listening are like, "Marnie's right." Well, yeah, you're right, but I want to be the guest forever. Eh, no. Nah, because technically, I'm still a guest. Well, you're still a guest in your own house. Okay, so. If she comes over here, I can be like, hey, um, can you grab that vacuum? And, sure. Um, go ahead and... Go for it. <laughs> go ahead and start making these shirts. <laughs> yeah. She'll be like, how do I do it? Anyway, I'm just saying, hey, I'm just saying, oh, I'm accept gonna, it and oh, just... Oh, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> what? Oh, Lord. What? I'm going to hand your mom um, a couple plastic bags and be like, hey, uh, can you go and get Nico's litter? Scoop out some of the... That's okay. That's too far. No, that's way too far. Whatever. We're family now. Uh, you can go. You can try it if you want. <laughs> yeah, I go over there and she hands me a bag. Can you get that dog turd off of the? Right. Uh, yeah. No, nah, I'm just playing. No, my family loves you. Oh. Uh, yeah, and then after, I mean, I don't know. It's a whole holiday period. A lot of people do different things. Obviously, with two different families, a lot of people are, are accustomed to that already, but. It's our first one of like, hey, let's do this and do that. And we're doing my family first and then doing your family after. Mm -hmm. So after you had your fun, then it'll be my turn. We should we should keep like a video diary of this. Want to? Yeah, let's Let's do it. it. Okay. For sure. And then. Yeah, that'd be funny. And we'll just tell family members, hey, look, if you get hurt by it, you know, talk to your therapist. You know, I mean, we're going to we're going to say things for humor and for purpose of entertainment so just disclaimer i see throwing it out there right now yeah because i had thought about uh, i i give the best christmas gifts i'm not gonna lie i do but sometimes my family they're not up to speed on things yet Mm -hmm. um my little brother's getting there like he's kind of realizing oh you know that is a really cool gift he got me like a year later but that's fine but I had thought about getting my older brother a breathalyzer. And a couple of years ago, I bought him a bidet. And my mom was just like, oh, my God, that's so rude. You don't buy somebody. You're saying their butt stinks. I'm like, everybody's butt stinks, Mom. I'm like, a bidet. Why wouldn't you want one of those? I think that's brilliant. And she didn't. She just was like, oh, that's so offensive. And like, whatever, man. So today, or the other day when I bought them, I was like, all right, cool. I'll give one to... A certain person because they haven't gotten it yet and i was like then i'll give one to my my older brother i'm driving home and i'm just thinking okay how's mom gonna say this is offensive and it hit me pretty quick oh you're pretty much calling him a drunk is what my mom's gonna say you're gonna say that he's got a drinking problem just like you and that's why you brought him a breathalyzer so he doesn't get pulled over uh, no i just thought it'd be coming handy sometime you know if he's ever like you know and I don't know if my brother drinks too much. I mean, he, he's the only one that can really figure that out. Mm-hmm. But if he does go out to dinner and have a drink, I'd know he wasn't like me, where he just couldn't stop. 
gifts like that are tricky in terms of if they'll be well received or not. Well, like, you know, like I don't know. Seems like he would like. Oh, that's pretty cool because we go and have a couple bottles of wine or whatever. He can just be like, yeah, let's just wait on this. You know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you explain how you you know your intentions of it, I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, I already sent his package. And I didn't put it in there. Okay. I think it cost more to mail his package than I actually did to buy it. No, it didn't. Anyway, what were you going to say? Oh, no. Nothing. Oh, you had your mouth open about to say something. I was going to say, then you probably chose, made the decision not to give it to him. Like, you had already subconsciously made that decision. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to hear it. There you go. So I'm going to go to the bar and sell it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Four times as much as I paid for it. Huh? Hey. Who in here doesn't want to get pulled over tonight? It's so almost started. Well, this guy here. Keep you safe. I don't know. The holidays, though, can be tough. If you've lost loved ones, you know, remember the good times. And you'll get teary-eyed. You'll cry. That's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a moment. If you need to take a moment, go for a walk. I don't know what state you live in, but if you live in Michigan, you're probably not going to the park to sit. But you could. You know, get in your car, go somewhere, you know, just sit. Have a good cry. You know, think about it if you need to. And just get it out and just remember the good times. You know, I think that's kind of what life's about. And the more memories you make and create, you know, when you look back at them, you'll you'll have a better feeling about life, I think. And, you know. Yeah. Good advice. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing pretty good at being married. <laughs> you are. You know, that's what I just said. But the other day, for real though, uh, it was my two year on the fifteenth. I got up and I, I was waiting for that special present. You know, no, 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 the it's coin. <laughs> no, the coin, <laughs> the coin. I was waiting for the coin, and I had a moment. And I thought, you know, A, I can sit here, wait for her to remember. And if she doesn't, I can play the victim. I can play the, oh, well, you didn't even remember. <laughs> Be a little baby about it. Or you know what? I could just remind her and we can celebrate it and I'll get my coin. And I chose that part because there was no, I don't know. I just, there was no game that needed to be played with it and, you might have forgotten my birthday for a minute, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but th- there's no need for that anymore. You know, like, I don't need to try to play the victim or, or be the bad, you know, like, let's just, hey, honey, you know what today is? You know, I think I said, and you're like, oh, it's your two year. And it was just such a better day, and it was such a better way to handle a situation where the old me, oh, I'd have been waiting. Mm-hmm. And then when you finally told me, oh, happy two years, I forgot. Oh, yeah, no, you know, I'd have been a, a jerk about it. Right. And there's things that I probably still do that about. But that time I caught it right away and it was like, wait a minute, let's let's act different today. You know, that's my wife. I love her. Why would I want her to walk around feeling like she forgot my stuff? And she, it wasn't you forgot. You were getting ready for work. I know. I'm terrible in the mornings. You know, who made you run late for work? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. But. You but know. I, I want to pat myself on the back because I was way super ahead of schedule on getting that coin for you because I ran into problems. One of your previous coins that I bought because Amazon decided to be take their sweet, sweet time and what have you. So I got it like two months ago. Mm-hmm. That's when I found it. And then he <laughs> found it. And <laughs> so <laughs> that was like, okay, there's the surprise gone, but... I yeah, didn't. don't don't wait on them coins on Amazon. Yeah, because I got burnt with one of your coins like that, uh-huh. and it said it was it was shipped from California or wherever, and made it to Chicago and the Grand Rapids and Traverse City. Mailman's got it. Nope, lost. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, mine Wait, was what? ordered, and <laughs> then it just said is not going to be delivered. Oh, like not it's a lot. It's like this it will not be delivered. No COVID, or I, whatever. I don't know what it was. It was weird. It's it's, it's really weird, but yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, if you're getting coins off Amazon, there's some really pretty ones, some cool ones. But read the reviews, and if people are talking about, oh, it just didn't show up, you know, maybe go with a different one. Might be a little cheaper, might not be as nice. Or, you know, go with both. You know, this is the beauty of Amazon. Most things you can send back if you don't need it. So Absolutely. At least that way you're ready. Hide it in a good spot, though. <laughs> maybe not in the battery drawer or the drawer with the tools. <laughs> yeah, I was not very suave on that. No. But, yeah. Well, I hope you have a good holiday, and hopefully you can sit back with loved ones, have some good memories, create some good memories, tell some good stories. And if you don't have a fireplace, there's always Netflix. Just Mm -hmm. type in fireplace. And just take it all in, you know, for those of you in early recovery at any point, you know, just take it all in feeling Christmas. And being able to experience and present in in the moment, in the holiday, wherever you're at. I mean, you have got the biggest gift going for you possible is being clear, clean and sober. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that in itself is huge. Huge for you, for the most part. Huge for the people that love you. And just pat yourself on the back for that. Because you've given your gift, the biggest gift to yourself for the holiday season. So keep it up and yeah, prepare yourself as best you can. If there's situations where you think, ah, oh, this might be it, you know, just prepare yourself and then go ahead one step further. Prepare yourself for the situation you're not prepared for. Mm-hmm. So and you're like, but when I get the ooh, uh, uh, deer in headlights look, have a plan already. Like, oh, if I feel that way, uh, uh, nope. Mm-hmm. Just say no. I don't have to live that way anymore. Right. And just run away. Yeah. Sprint. <laughs> And I do want to touch on for those for those of you who have uh, family members that are still have not really come around, maybe, um, in terms of like talking to you or communicating with you or, um, you know what I mean. They're kind of waiting it out. Just just be patient and just be okay with the fact that you're you know that you're in the best possible spot that you can be, doing exactly what you need to do be doing, and that just be patient because they'll come around. Um, and if they don't, they don't, but you cannot beat yourself up over that. Don't be sad about it. Just know that at the end of the day, you are a good person and that, you know, your family loves you. Um, and that we've all made mistakes in our life, but we are not those people anymore. Uh, we don't have to act like that anymore. And, um, just, you know, Bask in the person that you are today and um, celebrate yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just be glad that we don't have that tie to addiction to where all of our brain wants to do is go get high, go get drunk. We don't have to do that anymore. And just by not having that craving, that whole desire, you know, that's, that's what it does. You know, it's addiction. It, it takes over your brain. And all we want to do is that. That's the most important thing to us and sad. But when that's removed and you start living again and your front brain starts healing itself, you start working, you're going to become a better person. Like you're going to be more productive. Like everything you do in life is going to be better. Trust me. Mm -hmm. But it takes time. Yeah. I said, and you know, if if people are like, "Eh, it's just Steve over there. Yeah. 20th time he's done. it. Don't man, don't worry about those people, man. Yeah. Haters going to hate. Mm hmm. For sure. And ainter's gonna ain't. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Oh, man. All right. Uh, shout out to, even though this isn't Thursday, to Sparky. It's a, a guy I met. Okay. And he, he's a big fan. He's a rapper, too. Wow. I told him, I was like, dude, you can do whatever you want. And it's funny because he has videos on YouTube. And his first ones he's reading it, but it gets better each one. You know, it's just like I was telling somebody, I don't know, I tell everybody, you know, you can do anything you want just because you don't know how to do something doesn't mean you can't do it or be good at it. Mm -hmm. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. You know, 
lots of things I didn't know how to do until I learned how to do them. So same thing for him. You know, you can tell he's getting more comfortable and more comfortable. And the more you do things, the better you're going to get at it. So, I mean, he's practicing. He's trying. He's doing it, you know. So good for him. Mm -hmm. Give him a little shout out. Yeah, I got a couple shout outs, actually. Ironically, I was forwarding the requests that you sent for the sub- to subscribe to our YouTube channel mm-hmm. to people that were in in my Facebook, you know, and then I also followed that up with please subscribe because if we get a hundred subscribers, then you know just the ad the URL, and in doing so, um, some of the people that I have friended within the last year since I've been sober that are childhood friends, friends from my childhood, friends from high school, um, p- people I grew up with, um, never had, some of them not had really close relationships with, but, you know, never had nothing bad with them. Just, you know, we were schoolmates and got some responses from a couple of them. My, um, Kara Gall, who, um, well, it's now Kara Gall. But, um, and she's got her, she does a bunch of stuff on the internet and stuff too. She's doing amazing and has all her family started and so on. And she responded back to me and was sharing some stuff about, you know, her family and people that have been affected by, you know, addiction and that she was going to pass along the 217 stuff, which I thought was amazing. And another one of my friends that I played soccer with when I was a kid and, um, she ended up going to Michigan state same time I did. Uh, my friend Lisa, and she was telling me the same thing, you know, that it's good what we're doing. And, you know, everybody knows somebody, mm-hmm. uh, family members or neighbors or their own, you know, husbands or wives. And um, it's cool. It's really cool that we have this opportunity that people can listen um, and, you know, check us out and just hear what we have to say about life in recovery. It's awesome. Yeah. So shout out to those people. Hell yeah. Thanks. Shout out to Kim, uh, who's trying to help us out with some oil changes. Yeah. 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 That's very nice. Yeah, because oil changes cost money. Mm -hmm. And we go through a lot of them with taking people to to treatment, taking people home from treatment, taking people to doctors from treatment, then back to treatment. Mm -hmm. It's fun, though. It really is a meaningful position. Yeah. And I enjoy helping out. I donate my time as a driver, so. Absolutely. It's all good. One more shout out is randomly I was coming across a posting by a girl named Carrie who I came across when I was working in a treatment house. Not in the capacity that I'm working at now, but beforehand. And she is kicking butt. She's doing amazing, and just her words and her posting is, she's got that. She's got that feeling. She's got that. I just, well, I just wish other everybody could mm. feel the way that I feel. Yeah. She literally said those words. Wow. I mean, I got teary eyed when I was reading it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a long posting. It's like she's, you know, renewed her relationship with herself, and she's proud of who she is, and you know, she, all these relationships that she's had lost are, you know, had becoming, you know are recreating themselves and I mean it is just so moving and what she's saying is real mm-hmm. you can just feel it that she's found that it like she's found her it and it's happened for her and she wants everybody in recovery to feel that way and it's just <laughs> freaking amazing like I was just like literally tearing up when I was reading it like that's right yeah, you hit that hell yeah it's, girl oh it's just it's so amazing and you can't explain it. It's like there sometimes there are no words. You just are like, I don't know. And I don't even know how I got here, but I'm here and it's, I'm, I did it and I need to, you know, and we do every day renew that, renew that, you know, commitment. So that's how we're going to live our lives today. But dude, we don't need that crap anymore. And it's like, it's amazing. I, I don't know. So anyway, shout out to her. Big time, proud of her. I saw her when she wasn't as awesome as she is now, and that was just not all that long ago. I think that Even, people who suffer from substance use disorder, I think we appreciate life a lot more. Oh, absolutely. When we come out on the other end, it's like, oh my gosh, like this is so amazing. Like, yeah, bad days, good days, whatever. But like, you you can just, I don't. It's, like I said, it's it's hard to put into words, but. 
yeah, I think that we appreciate it. And, and maybe we don't, maybe we do, but I know I, at this stage of my life, appreciate it more than I ever did or ever could even imagined when I was drinking. So mm-hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Good job, Carrie. Yeah. Just show me that post. I can't wait to read it. I will. All right. Well, like us and subscribe on, on YouTube, though, is the number one goal. And then, um, yeah, have a good Christmas. We'll talk to you on Christmas Eve. Yes. Thursday night, Christmas Eve. Yep. Sounds good. Well, I'll have a family member around. Okay. That I've never had on before. I, I don't know. I'll do something. Maybe we'll have the twins, the little boys on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have some fun, though, because it is Christmas. Yay. So, appreciate you listening, and if you need anything, hit up our website, 217recovery.com. That's right. Night, everybody. See ya.